building websites. Squarespace. That brings us to our sponsor, Squarespace. Are, are you kind of gay and can't get a fucking boner for your wife? Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's no, are you are overweight you, and drink? Are you Roman ready, dude? I am. Do you see Roman. those, dude? That's the funniest fucking billboard. Like, what are you know, guys that can't get their dicks hard like Roman soldiers? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, Why is fun. all the dick stuff like Trojan and like very like... Because people unconsciously affiliate themselves with like conquest. You get someone yeah. in their darkest hour, dude, when their phallus fails, which is like, you know, that's their, that's someone questioning their whole thing. And you're like, no, dude, like you're a Babylonian. They're like, yeah, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah I am. The fuck am I talking I'm about? I'm going to fuck this You think lady. the fucking Trojan warriors wore fucking condoms, dude? Probably not. Yeah, dude. There was. There was the cookie wrapper. Very annoying. Touch that thing. Very noisy. Oh my god! It's so Very loud. noisy. <laughs> <laughs> Cellophane might be one of the noisiest. Actually, it's funny because it says serving size. A quarter of the cookie is one serving. True. The per container is four hundred ninety calories. <laughs> yeah, sixty grams of carbs. Do you think anyone that buys a, a cookie from the gas station observes like the no serving one, size? No one has. I've look. I've eaten these cookies before, and I've never once even been like, huh. <laughs> snapped it into force. Oh, I'm not. I'm getting eleven milligrams of calcium. That's good. Nice. That's what I get from these sheets macadamia cookies. From the entire cookie or per serving? That was per serving. You can get a ton of magnesium. Good magnesium. You man. need to boost your mag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on to boost and mag. Lately. I'm pretty sure people open those and like are pissed. There's not two cookies in there. You have to be. But yeah, Roman Ready's my shit. I won't say who. Billy found Roman Ready in somebody's car. Uh, somebody's, you know, an elder. And dude, an elder. Yeah, an elder. An older person. I know. Not, not my father. I'll say that. No, I know yeah, who it was, dude. And it was so fucking. Was funny. this person on a podcast for the first time? No, recently? no, no, no. Oh, I thought no, it was Hoss. No, fuck no. <laughs> Hoss, Hoss would snap, dude. I wonder why Hoss probably stays hard as hell. Hoss seems like he gets hard. He probably gets hard as hell. I've been getting hard lately. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. I've just been getting rock hard. Go to your doctor, dude. Be like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm getting yeah, fucking wrong, hard as hell. Dude. I keep getting hard as hell. So you're getting rock hard. No, I lost I lost a little bit of weight. and uh, Yeah, man. I've been uh, just jerking off as hard as I can. And you're getting, hard, you're getting rock hard for jerking off? Damn. That was a beast of a fart I just had. <laughs> <laughs> you've been getting hard as hell for yourself? Yeah. That's what's up, man. And I've just been getting into it, you know. I fucking love that. I'm pumped. I'm getting so hard, man. So you be, are you been lubing or something? Like, how, that'll get you hard. If you're Loops. lubing. I might have to get a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> dude, remember when uh, Beezer got laid up from fucking Seven Eleven Snickerdoodles? Yeah, man. Put him in the put him in bed, dude. Yeah. You can't munch these. No, dude. They get, he had doodle tooth. He had a severe case of dudes. What, what was that? His tooth got like hollowed he out? He just got a dead tooth from snickerdoodles. Damn. Just smoking cigarettes and being like, oh, I'll get some snickerdoodles. And Snacking them in his bed. He was, la he was laid up for like a couple days. Yeah, he was, oh. in, a <laughs> he was in a tomb. <laughs> I'm happy We're just to hear. being silly. I'm happy to hear you. This is a silly cell. podcast. This is a silly. This is very, very silly. I wish I could fucking kill you. Why? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what are you going to do at the beach? Are you going to? I was thinking about building a hole. Yeah. Way steep, with a little bit of room in there to just fucking whack. I've been buried in sand before. Whack at again. the beach though. Really? Yeah. If you dug a pit, just shoulder. Sure. Shoulder. You could feasibly jerk off at the beach in you, front of everyone. It's just your head coming. Yeah. And you're just, yeah, you could. Then they'd see your face just like. The pro here's the problem though. Here's a we're gonna need a uh, something like a five gallon bucket because we're gonna need like walls because yes. that sand gets in. You're gonna be scratching yourself. You, yes. So you'd have to. True. You, if we put our dick in a plastic bag while we're buried, so we give ourselves a little bit of like clean room and like have like a latex glove on, we could just underneath the bag. I mean, obviously, a gallon size. You know, what we could do half gallon. We could just install. We could cut it, carve out a flashlight. Just lay flat oh, on the sand. Just all take turns, dude? And occasionally... And wash it out in the ocean in between yes, the takes. Yes, go out to sea. Dude, that I hope would my be... dad will be cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> if my dad is not cool with that, I'm... But all flat. We should bury one of those big... Remember the big ass thing we saw? It's like a, We should bury like an entire big fake ass. You know what would be really funny? To bury one of those fake asses? <laughs> except... All right, so I'm laying. Yeah. And we cover... I I'm actually... Bent, oh, bent no. at the waist, yeah. and we put the fake ass oh. as if it's actually my <laughs> ass. And dudes are just fucking me. <laughs> and I'm like, just all day long. <laughs> just all day long. Just, just slamming dude, you, dude. This dude's getting raped. 
<laughs> There's like seagulls landing on your ass. <laughs> The Mexicans love the lads love getting pictures at Dude, the memorials. That was wild. What an honorable. There was thing, a mom man. and daughter. I think they do that just to throw it in everybody's face back home. But they it's don't. Like, we made it, baby. True. <laughs> Look at this. Is, we're at the memorial right now. True. They could have just been stunting. There might have been no. I think that's lad stunting. Oh, you think that was absolutely no quinceanera? Because there was a mom and her daughter in like just prom dresses. Not yeah, prom dresses. How about the in mom? Twenty six degrees. The mom. How about those the, cans, the dude? The were out, dude. I, That's the one thing I remember from visiting the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. Massive Mexican tits. Yes, dude. By the reflecting pool. It was crazy. <laughs> I might go back to the reflecting pool and reflect on those big titties. Dude. <laughs> Staring at the water. If you look, dude, that'd be sick if you go in the reflecting pool and you just see big Mexican tits and you're like, oh, sweet. They were just countries built on. They were Fs. No, they, they were Fs. They were Fs. Sure. They were Fs, dude. They were Fs, dude. Absolute Fs. That was crazy. Just getting those bombs in a dress. <laughs> and she probably gave her a talk before the reflection pool. She's like, Donya, one day your upper thoracic mobility will be trashed. <laughs> but you will have the biggest titties. Yes. That's the quinceanera. Just get ready for having Fs, dude. How do they get Fs out of nowhere? I don't know. Mexican ladies kind of they ball. have a couple kids, dude. They fucking... <laughs> <laughs> she's probably like the transformation is near the incredible hulk yeah, you were alive like, you won't like me when i'm pregnant and then they're just like Whoa. <laughs> yeah she's like you are lithe and slender senorita but we will pop out a kid and you will transform <laughs> into a unit into a fucking, a fucking wagon <laughs> everyone's gonna notice your bombs at the fucking reflecting pool those things were fucking crazy Dude, they ruled they stopped me in my tracks. They did. They were the most awe-inspiring thing we saw. You went day. one way. I went another way. I was like, look, you can pull me off that fence, but I'm going and getting front row center to these big Mexican <laughs> bombs, dude. Of course, big government tried to stop us from that, too. Yeah, of course. Capitol Police were like, keep it moving, fellas. And we are like, yeah, right, dude. <laughs> I can stare for seven seconds. That's my legal right as that a citizen. Is a legal You're right. allowed to stare at a woman, I think, for like, I think it's three seconds. You're within your legal right to just go... Yeah, and then sense. keep it moving. You're allowed. Out. No one can stop you from doing that. I think you can do. I don't know what the what the age thing How is. How close can you be? That's uh, another. You I gotta think observe you, Fauci six feet. You can't be up in the grill staring. Oh yeah, I think there is a foot thing. I think as long as you do, I think if, if you just give it your wingspan. So if you go up, don't touch the grill. But if you go like, I'm legally allowed to do this. I'm measuring the distance I can be, so I can stare at you for full three seconds, and I'll be on my way, man. <laughs> so I legal right. <laughs> Yeah, also, you can hit them with a hard stare in passing. If you're both walking on the sidewalk, you can hit them the whole – To the point where you can't turn your head. That's the only thing. True, yeah. You can I mean, stare as long as you want while you're walking and passing on the sidewalk. But it's, the second you turn your head, it is it becomes a bit of a harassment issue. We got to start bird-dogging pussy harder, dude. I think we need to. <laughs> just turn it around. Just be like, look, I don't want anything. I'm just, I'm just bird-dogging you. And even if I, if I got canceled again. Sweet. You, got, you, well, did, you did it. Yeah, you did it. You Yes. You put the ball over the end zone. <laughs> if I if I got canceled again, if you get canceled twice, that means you're you're doing something pretty good. True. Like Getting if dumb. you got canceled and then came back, and they're like, he's back. <laughs> get him. <laughs> I mean, the more canceled you get, literally the more talented you are. It's true. The fact that you can survive one true. is impressive. Like, shout out Mel. Dude, Mel Mel just gets canceled. He's a cockroach, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so like, and he called him dude. <laughs> He gets he gets canceled yeah, hard N word. Yeah, he gets canceled for like the. I mean, he also pluralized it, which no one gives him credit for. So it's like when you shoot ten people, he got like a he pluralized it, so they got to give him like ten counts of the N word. Oh, because he said <laughs> pack yeah, every pack it off. Yeah. So that's like you know Dude, that's like shooting at fifteen people. That was it's a like, tough one though, because that was a private recording. Mm -hmm. His what he said was so atrocious that it does kind of cancel out the private recording. But there's yeah. kind of a part of me that's always like, it's a private court of me. You can't fucking. Uh, yeah. Or are you even allowed to do Although that? I think it was a voicemail on someone else's phone. I think he left a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> so he recorded. He was like, fucking press record. <laughs> oh, I legitimately didn't know he was Australian. He did a Billy. I, I had to tell Billy last week Mel Gibson was Australian. I had no fucking And Russell Crowe. No, I, I think I knew Russell Crowe. I had no idea until today that Mel Gibson was Australian. I watched a part of an interview and I was like, I watched part of an interview and I was like, what the fuck? Oh, is he doing a bit? This guy's fucking Australian? Oh, maybe that's why you liked Mel. Every time he said something, you're like, he's doing the Australian accent, dude. He's clearly fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, the Jews are bad. Like, he's joking. <laughs> anyway, how are you? 
What's pretty going good, on? man. Pretty good. The weekend was a uh, good weekend. That was in victorious, DC. dude. Oh man, our nation's capital. We went down to our nation's capital, paid a visit to Lincoln. Dude, it was it was so man. I I like it was funny. We were right near the capital, and Chain literally had to yank me by my boots to pull me down off the barricades. Oh. I was going over. I Matt, was going over. He, Matt scaled every fence he could see. I was going over, dude. Of course you were. You're a patriot. I need to go. I need to take a selfie. That that was important for us to go take selfies. We should have. Yeah, we should have recorded an episode from Pelosi's desk. We could have. Easily. They couldn't have stopped us. There's no chance they would have stopped us. But yeah, I was like, scan. I was over the edge. And he grabbed my, he's like, we got a show to do. And I was like, you're right. You're right. Our responsibility is <laughs> defense. And we both put our hands behind, behind each other's necks. And just like, we got a show tonight. I, I know we both want to go in there and take pictures of ourselves in those fucking swivel chairs. Let's go to the Lincoln Memorial and honor this country properly by reading it around a bunch of tourists that don't care and Mexicans <laughs> taking quinceanera photos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. This is it. Oh, we're on. We're okay. doing an, another history podcast. This time we've got the Colin Quinn. Yes. And today's topic is Vietnam. Vietnam. What a yeah. time. Yeah. What a crazy time. <laughs> hey. I mean, in some ways, I feel like it's the most important. It it changed everything. Plus, it was at that time, you know? Yeah. But it changed. I always feel like these things have like bigger, like what comes first? Vietnam makes people... It, was it a revolution where everybody's like, we're fighting against the system, or was Vietnam the thing that triggers it off? And it's to, would it have happened without Vietnam? Would the 60s have happened without Vietnam? Yeah. Because Vietnam, as you know, I, I'm breaking about my extensive knowledge, started for America in the 40s. Yeah. And yeah. And it was because um, we were helping France, because we owed France from. The Revolutionary War. We, yeah, I was the, the thing I've looked at it, dude. France dragged us into this to the point that's no like, oh, France was France owned Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It was a colony. Japan took it when they went. They got a little wild. Yeah, yeah. And then the United States liberated it. Okay, and the, that was the thing. Ho Chi Minh, the guy who ended up being the leader of the Viet Cong, was like, I love America. That's he was right. Like, he that's was right. right. He was writing letters to Truman. That's saying, right. Like, I love you. Thank you. They were like Americans are the only free people on earth. Yes. These are incredible people. The leader of them yeah, yeah. loved America. Yeah. And then he started this is the craziest part. So France goes back in after the war and is like, We're taking it back. And America was like, Come on, don't do that. Yeah. And we we were kind of siding with Ho Chi Minh and, mm. and the Vietnamese. And then France was like, This is the beginning of the Cold War. So France is like, Hey, if you guys don't support us. Maybe we'll start listening to from Russia. And then America was like, all right, we'll help you out. Damn. Anyway. That is interesting. And by the way, speaking of Ho Chi Minh, writing letters to Truman, all those letters were redacted and like, yeah. to like 1970 something. Uh, and half of them Truman never got because the Secret Service was like, wow. He doesn't need to that. see these. Yeah. Yeah, making those decisions. Everybody made, but that's the whole thing about Vietnam too. Everybody's making their own decisions determining so the the when you have power you know when you disperse power in that way everybody goes i'll take this part and they're all just like <laughs> and yeah and because of the cold war the secret service and the cia mm -hmm. were like this is more important like the cia versus the kgb in russia yeah, yeah. and the soviet union that became the two superpowers yeah. yeah and they were doing stuff like undermining the president to be like the war against russia is more i mean it was it's it's I I don't like Vietnam because but, of how frustrating and stupid it is. Well, but first of all, the CIA, when you think about it, their whole thing was the Cold War first. So all the drug dealing that happened in the seventies and eighties was again through from every cartel, the CIA when they like, okay, CIA, they would stop the DEA from doing their job yeah. all the time because they're like, the Cold War, these are anti communists. But they're the heads of the cartels. Yeah, yeah. But they're anti-communists, and that was their priority. So they they made that choice, and I'm sure the president didn't want to make the choice, whoever it was during yeah. all those times. But that was the choice they always made. Damn. Then they did the just say no like ten years later. Like, come on, guys, don't do drugs. That's just say no. But <laughs> yeah, even yeah, yeah, just yeah. say no. So they were still telling the DEA back. Vietnam, the French, the French, the French are fucking dickheads. Dude. Brutal. They were dickheads. So they dragged us in. They, we were, they we absolutely were, dragged us in. Well, the letters. they dragged us in, but we wanted in too. I mean, we, we could have left. We could have left 10. We could have left. I mean, if you, I read this book, A Bright Shining Light. I just happened to be reading it. By the way, 
whenever you read a book, it, especially a Kindle, try to find out how many pages it is. First. Oh, yeah. This book's 800 pages. <laughs> Fuck. So I was reading it like, oh, this is a bright shining light. It doesn't sound yeah. like a long book. Yeah. It's the history of everything. But uh, but France, they left. We helped them. So there was one that would turn Ho Chi Minh. One of the things that turned him is we decided we supplied France with all these, um, all the mortars and everything where they destroyed a lot of it is in Vietnam, and that turned, yeah, uh, them against America too. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. yeah it, it was uh, there was a battle. I forget the name of it. So I was just Dien watching Ken Burns on it. What is it? Dien Ben Phu. Yes. So the French were kind of fucking up the Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had it was the same as us for them. They had yeah. superior firepower, but again, just like time and time again, the Vietnamese were very good at guerrilla warfare because we trained them during World War Two. Oh yeah, yeah, a little you know Mujahideen type shit. Yeah. And they were about to come to talks, France and Vietnam. They were about to come to the table. Before they went to have talks, they both tried to get one more offensive in. So they had leverage when they went to talks. Nice. So France sets up at, what's it? Bien Den Bien, Bien Phu, yeah. They just put themselves at the bottom of this valley. And they're like, we're just going to build an airfield here. We're going to fuck them up. One of the French generals was like, I have too many guns. We're going to fuck these dudes up. Damn. And the Vietnamese surrounded them in this valley and just destroyed them. The French guy, the general that led that, killed himself honorably because he was like, we're going to wipe the floor with these guys. Why are they going to valley? Isn't that a bad? I'm not a military was, tactician, yeah, but isn't that like not the good idea? Yeah, it was a bad idea. Well, it's funny you say that because even Quezon, the famous uh, 14 years later, America did the same thing. Set themselves up in a, in, was surrounded by all the mountains. So created a valley and set up an airstrip, a landing strip <laughs> in the valley and got killed because of it. Damn. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, that, yeah. the other thing on Vietnam is you realize how, like, how, you know, you always think when you're young, at least, like the people in charge, they spend all their time doing this. They know what they're doing. But there were so many egos involved that mm -hmm. the few people were like, this is not working. We're just, they were just like, stop. Yeah. You don't know what you're saying. Just because of ego. People think, oh, their Damn. motive was they wanted money. They would still get the money. This was about like something else, a power struggle that where you pay the price or the troops pay the price. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, if you're just some dude sitting in a village and some guy had an argument and you're just getting blown up and you're like, what's this about? <laughs> oh, and the other thing <laughs> that some guy was, couldn't like, come to grips with it. He was like, no, I'm right. <laughs> in the early 60s, they had this Hamlet program where they would bring, they said, we're going to bring all these weapons to each hamlet all these little hamlets because it was kind of half and half like north korea mm -hmm. and they brought all these weapons to all these hamlets and said look you're in charge of the weapons and it was all american-made modern stuff and of course the Viet Cong, who kind of controlled more or less they had the hearts of the people they took all the weapons so we supplied the Viet Cong with all these weapons <laughs> in the early 60s and it kept them going it genuinely makes me like i, I all my information's from the Ken Burns documentary. Right. And I watch it and every time I'm watching it, I by episode two, I'm like, what is going like it's Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Well, I don't know if this was in the Ken Burns documentary, but did you see the guy? It is I think it is. I saw the Ken Burns. He's Beckwith with the guy in the an advisor, Colonel Beckwith. Oh yeah. Charging Charlie Beckwith. And he goes, they interview him and he go, uh, what do you think of the Viet Cong? He goes, finest soldier I've ever seen. This is a 1960. He goes, what? The Viet Cong. He goes, best soldier. I wish I had 200 of them under my command. And right away, you're like, oh, we should have realized yeah. something was up then. Well, they also, they'd been fighting for 30 years. Mm -hmm. These dudes have been fighting since like World War II. They didn't stop fighting. Really? From World War II until the end of Vietnam, they were fighting constantly. And their home territory. Yeah. And they're so small, they had to be crafty. They All the tunnels... All the trails, they know everything. Oh fuck! Yeah. Was that the first American war where like the American troops were like, what, "What's the point of yeah. this?" Yeah, the first. I think time Korea. Like, I'm sure they were a little bit like actually. Yeah, Korea. Korea. We did. We MacArthur yeah. screwed up Korea. Yeah, MacArthur. Everybody was like, "Don't do this." MacArthur's like, "I love the people." Loved him. Yeah, the Korean people were like this guy's our savior, and the, and he just was like a king over there. Yeah, and then he just said, "We're gonna do it this way." I forget. He landed on the coast. So he did something that was strategically a nightmare. And even his generals are like, don't do this. What are you doing? And he goes, I know what I'm doing. And <laughs> yeah, that guy, he had an ego, dude. That stinks. He referred to himself in the third person. Did he? he? Fucking yeah. Nuts. Yeah, he was wild. MacArthur was wild. He might get a bad rap, though. I kind of like him. Yeah, no, he was beloved. Look, yeah. the people 
loved him because he Japan loved him because after World War II they were expecting because they were so uh, horrendous during World War II they expected him to really bear down and he treated them like he said you treat these people like human beings so Japanese. Japanese people treat him like a god so he felt like a god that's tough to shake off that would get me yeah if I was getting like samurai glory I'd be like yeah you know what <laughs> yeah, <sure>. I know <laughs> Even Dude, if like I, presenting you sword. Those yeah, cool I guess suits. I if yeah. I get to wear those cool suits, I'm like, who do I? I'll I think that's why God never even let me sell out like the beacon or something like that. <laughs> he keeps me at a level of three to 400 seats yeah. on the road. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> oh, man. So, the, yeah, what was it? So chronologically, the French direct. So we were like. Boys so it was a them. French colony. Then there's World War II. Yeah. Japan takes over. And and it, like always when Japan would invade. Every all the Asian countries were like, "Nice, finally the white colon, colonists are gone. Yeah. We're gonna get treated well." And they immediately get starved to death and yeah. beheaded and fucked with. It sucks. So then, when the Americans liberated Vietnam, and the British, whoever, they were like, "We love America." And then France, after World War II, who just got their ass whooped. Yeah, yeah. They're like, "Actually, we want those colonies back." <laughs> nice. Yeah. And Vietnam was like, "No, this is ours now. Yeah, we're independent again." So then, do they have to write a letter to Vietnam like, "Hey, buddy, uh, we're coming back." Bad news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, sorry. We we'll, we should start chronologically. Yeah. Let you. I'll, what all you? I watched is Ken Burns. What? Oh, uh, what are we talking about? Well, I yeah, don't know. Whatever you want. What you said, and then so then France when they lost, you know what I mean? The Geneva uh, talks. Geneva. I think it was the first Geneva talk back then. Maybe not. But then that was the best one. Was that probably that was the best, the best one? one. First, we were like, "Hey, I like Jenny, you know." And um, and then um, we went in. Eisenhower said, "We're just going to arm them in the fifties, you know. We're just going to keep arming them because we don't want communism to spread down there." And then, uh, because China, they were about China taking over Vietnam, but Vietnam wasn't worried because they were half communist. Like he said, by that point, Ho Chi Minh was pro-American until that horrible event where the France destroyed like all these innocent villages, and then. He turned on America because we supplied France. They we, didn't have, in, fair enough. In Bien Den Phu. Bien Bien Phu is when they got cocky. America in. started supplying France because mm -hmm. the only way the French could get anything was airdrops. Yeah. Because they were in a valley getting destroyed. Like 8,000 French dudes died. Jesus. Uh, again, though, the Vietnamese lost like three to one casualties, but they were like, that's a victory. Yeah. That's they right. were getting wiped out constantly. Yeah. that was, What was that one quote? Like, all we have to do is just stay here. And just die. And yeah, that was the one. The one of the uh, Vietnamese soldiers like, all we have to do is just not become extinct, and we win. And I was like, it's great. That's tough. Well, that's the problem with everything, right? I mean, anytime you go anywhere, the people that live there, they they have nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, well, I'm, I, I, you know, you trap a, a trapped rat is going to fight to the death. Yeah. But so then, um, yeah, it got to the point where in the they're talking about like the United States was literally funding eighty percent of the French versus Vietnamese war. We were giving France 80% of the budget Damn. to win the war. Yeah. Yeah. France sucks. France did a bad job, and then they left, and then we decided it was such a, it's such a weird... I look at it so, like, psychologically. Like, what I understand about the common... The domino theory was part of it, but yeah. the psychological uh, mindset you put yourself into, the, there was this guy, Harkins, the general. He was the guy that ran it. He was the... He is really responsible in many ways because we go back and tell the president and these guys, it's going good. But even then, <laughs> the presidents, the ambassadors, they all went along. It just goes to show. I mean, I quote my mother all the time. I rest us all. But she used to always say people and I see this deeper and deeper in everything. And this is a perfect example. People are attracted to bullshit. And if you offer them something that's quality or truthful and bullshit, they go for the bullshit every time. And I said to my mother at the time, I go, that's true most of the time. She goes, I didn't say most of the time. I said every time. And Vietnam's a perfect example because he was this guy, Van. This whole book, Bright Shine Lies, about this guy, Van. It was a, in Vietnam. For, he, he was the early guy. And he's like, look, we're going to lose. Here's what's happening. The Hamlets, we're giving away our guns. The communists are taking. We're bombing village. We were searching to destroy in 1963. Jesus. And he goes, we're, we're losing everybody. We got to either win them over through like social revolution, the corruption of, of the South Vietnamese. They're taking everything. Their special forces that we trained are destroying people. This is terrible. We're losing. And everybody, even the people that kind of knew better, just went like, oh. And then somebody was like, no, we're just going to do this. And they're like, okay, let's do that. And it yeah. wasn't that it was easier. And they almost like will themselves into like, if you've ever been involved in like a, 
TV or movie project, right? And everyone's sitting there and you start out going, it's got to be this. And then slowly you start to go, oh, yeah, no, that. And then somebody that wasn't involved in the first month walks in and goes, are you guys all gone crazy? And yes, you have. <laughs> and no that's one wants what to say like, it sucks. They're like, no, this is good. <laughs> you start to believe it. <laughs> yeah. You get in this stupor. And that's what I think happened in Vietnam with a, our military. I mean, and all, you know. You're on the set of Aquaman 6 and you're like, this still is good. This, this is, is good. This might yes. be the best picture. And do you ever go to a screening of a movie? No. And then I've gone to screenings of movies mm. and you'll sit there and be like, that movie was really good. If you're around the movie, sure, you, yeah. you know the cast, you know, for yeah, the people, yeah, yeah. Like, it was good. It was bad. <laughs> And then if I've been with people that go, are you crazy? That we shit. <laughs> and then later I'm like, I was in a state of temporary insanity. And I feel like that's what happened. Oh. For also, the, the domino effect bothers me. It just annoys me. You don't like, like dominoes? I, obviously, <laughs> you I, don't like, obviously, I crush dominoes. No, you don't. I'll tell you what you don't like. You don't like that uh, slippery slope theory. That's basically the domino effect, yeah. right? I agree. I don't when like it, it. When it comes to well, why we were in Vietnam, yeah. was they were like, well, if if China's influence and the Soviet influence gets Vietnam, they're going to get all of Southeast Asia. Yeah. And it's like, so? Well, but at the time, Russia had just taken all of Eastern Europe in the early 50s. So in the grand scheme of things, considering how people felt at that time. I know they were scared of it, but it's. I mean, it wasn't like just some crazy. It was like, wait. They just took Czechoslovakia, Hungary, all these yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, They're moving. Everybody in Europe is on the same page. Everybody's like post World War II, and they're like, "Oh, they're gonna move." Because everybody knew even in World War II. Remember, Patton. Patton was like, "We should go right into Russia." Yeah. Patton, by the way, a, a, an enemy of my family. Really. I, one of my uncles was uh, 19 years old. World War II, captured by the Germans. POW camp for a year. German POW camp. 90 pounds, he's 19 years old, maybe he's 20 by now. He's in the uh, hospital when they finally release him. Patton's visiting all the wounded troops. Then he gets to the POWs. They go, do you want to, these are all the POWs. He goes, I don't talk to cowards. <gasps> Patton says, he goes, I don't talk to cowards. You're supposed to die with your unit. I don't believe in POWs. So my uncle hated Patton. Every, <laughs> every film we get to the other people like, Especially when the movie Patton came out. It was like, hey, George, you're going to go see the Patton movie? And he's like, his name was George, too. And he's like, ah, I beat it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he went and just snubbed the POWs? He he literally goes, cow, he called them cowards. Yeah. <sighs> My uncle's like 90 pounds. He's 19, 20 years old. He's I mean, like, one of the opening scenes oh. in Patton is when he's slapping a guy in the hospital. The, oh, yeah. He's that's slapping right. him, calling him a fucking the coward PTSD, in the hospital. Right. That's right. The PTSD yeah. guy. All right. Yeah, that's what a jerk. So, yeah, where are we at? We're saying, we gotta, we're saying that you don't believe in the domino theory. I yeah. mean, I, I understand at the time there's, you know, there's a hysteria. It's the same reason we went into Iraq. We were like, yeah, they're trying to kill us. They hate our right. freedom. They do. And after 15, 20 years, we're like, what was that? Right. There was no weapons. Yeah. And then, yeah, once, I don't know. Well, I've, I remember that George, remember the book I was talking about, the George Friedman book, where it was the next hundred years and they predicted all that stuff. Remember like two weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine? Yeah. That he was saying that U.S. is so far and ahead of everybody, like economically, militarily, that all they're trying to do is break up every alliance that forms. Yeah. So it's like they don't. It does, it's not about winning wars; it's about just to stabilize. But at this point, Russia was they're gaining. They're they were they were pretty powerful. They just got the nuke. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, but it he. Was, by the way, to that end, I think it was Ellsberg, the guy with the Pentagon Papers, which was a big thing. But when it, one of these guys was looking into the Russia thing in 1960, he was working with a nuclear, nuclear, and it, he said it was shocking because they were like Russia knew they were nowhere in the same ballpark with us. They had nothing compared to us. Really? And the military just had this, you know, narrative in their head like Russia and us, and they were just child's play compared to us at the, at the time, you know, 58, 59, something like that. I think that was Ellsberg, Pentagon Papers, but I'm not sure, but some... Something like that. But yeah, that was the other side of it. Damn, so so we're even fighting that was bullshit. <laughs> but they did take all those countries. I mean, that was real. Yeah, yeah. yeah but all those countries are... Well, they, were they shit because Europe of that, Eastern Southeast though? Asia. But were, they, <laughs> but were they shit then, or were they... Because of... Because people say the same thing about any uh, any colony, you know? Yeah, like you're talking like Macedonia, Bulgaria. And how... But this brings up the question BC. about capitalism versus communism. How important is free will? That's the question. So I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what this whole thing is about, right? Yeah, yeah, or I, I think it's human organization schemes. Aren't there people at the top of communism who live like very well and kind of rule still anyway? Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just kind of like a which one do you want, peasants? It's like you get to compete and have fun, or it's like or you share. It's you know, right? 
Yeah. But I mean, obviously, I, we, I mean, I'll I like capitalism. Communism. I like the Don't idea of capitalism. <laughs> the what? Capitalism. I mean, obviously, we it's when it's unfettered, it's not going to work. But the idea of capitalism, I like because it f- appeals to humans' natures greedy side which mm-hmm. i feel like anytime you appeal to people based on something that's not so innocent that's probably the healthy way to go because that's how people's nature is it's not repressed but if it goes to obviously you can't have people just you know doing whatever they want that's a yeah. problem just yeah, going I mean, so, into space was that yeah <laughs> just like, guys just launching crazy. themselves into space i mean the results are in so far it's one in terms Capitalism? of like remaining a thing in the world yeah yeah oh yeah it's one it's one and yeah it's winning. And currently. communism has to try harder to keep people from giving their opinion. So that means it's not a good system. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't work very well. We're we're, we're getting we're dancing with that a little bit. Yeah. Not being able to say stuff. So Oh, absolutely. We'll see. Maybe that'll go well. Who knows? Maybe the whole thing will just collapse and we'll all fucking die. I said it was a it was a weird narcotic state where we you know, it's been kind of a thing after World War II. It's gone now, but where we're like, no, we don't really, we don't really fail. Everybody wants to do, everybody wants this because it worked so well. Not just World War II, the Marshall Plan even worked because we're dealing with all these countries and suddenly they're coming back by 1960s, 50s. Germany's even back. So we're like the benign guys that we look, control things, at, but everybody's kind of like getting their thing who yeah. wants to be on the team. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we didn't realize it was a whole, Undercurrent. So, like the overcurrent is Europe, then the undercurrent is the colonies. So, all the colonies were rebelling starting in the late 50s. Oh, yeah. From Africa to, you know, South America. And, um, yeah, so there was that whole thing going on, you know. The vacay spots were popping up. There was so much going on, isn't it weird? All the sandals. (laughs) Sandals resorts. All the sandals resorts where they've had it up to here. Yeah. That makes sense. So, it was kind of a weird, uh, it was an interesting time. I can see communism appealing to that. Yeah. You're down. Oh, Cuba. Look at Cuba with the whole. Mafia thing, and you know, it was such an yeah. interesting thing where it was like, you know, they let all these capitalist things, and then they were like, no, and Castro came in, and you know what I mean? They even though Cuba failed, they didn't like the corruption level that was going on. And same thing with South Vietnam. Yeah, we that was the thing. We propped up some dumbass. We propped up a dumbass, and and we would never get rid of it. And then as soon as you saw that part, we were watching mm. it. Yeah, we propped up this dude who just immediately started persecuting the Buddhists. Absolutely started. Yep. His wife was a yeah. monster who was like, good, I'm glad they're burning themselves. Yes. His wife I mean, and his was, brother. Yeah, they were just morons. Yeah. Yes. And we couldn't back off because we we were like, it's still better than communism. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ho Chi Minh was kind of cool. Right. He liked us at the beginning. Yeah. He, was, he, was he wasn't like, totally into this thing. And then yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's like but assistant. he became, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. assistant manager. Now, did you know a lot of guys that were in Vietnam? I knew a few. Yeah. yeah. I was a kid. I was a kid doing the whole thing, you know? Yeah. And I remember as a little kid, you'd watch, it was on the news every every day at five and six o'clock, you'd see the footage from Vietnam. So it was like such a part, it wasn't like I was shocked because I wasn't from the generation before that. That was all I knew. I was seven, yeah. eight years old, nine years old. But I remember seeing footage of Vietnam all the time on TV and the news and it was just a constant thing. And I remember one time in class, we were talking about Vietnam. This is probably 71, or maybe 70. And... The teacher or the kids were going, yeah, Vietnam is bad. And this girl in our class starts screaming and crying because her brother got killed in Vietnam. So I knew I knew probably three guys, older guys, they didn't hang out with me, but I mean, yeah. I knew three guys who were Marines in Vietnam that got wounded, that came home, and they all had those cliche uh, Marine personalities. I mean, uh, Vietnam vet personality, yeah. the Army jacket. By themselves, the big beards when they're home, heavy drinker, Damn. heavy smoker, you know, prone to outbursts, but still good guys. Like they were yeah. guys we like, you know, they weren't like people hung out with them and talked to them, but they had that other side to them, partly from being in the war, partly from what they did, partly from what Vietnam did, and partly from their reaction when they came home. Yeah. It wasn't like you walk around, people weren't going, thank you for your service either, you know. Yikes, yeah. like, that stinks. Yeah, so I knew a few guys, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing we were talking about. O'Connor brought this up. We were mm-hmm. talking about last night. He's like, imagine, so imagine today's college student. Imagine Jesus being Christ. a dude who got drafted yeah. and had to go live through hell. And then you get home and one of these fuckers throws like a bag of piss at you and is like, baby killer. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. That That's was- when I would join the... 
Ohio National Guard and head, <laughs> <laughs> I would head down to Kent State and say, "Fuck you guys." Yeah, true. Um, that's 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 a, yeah. But it but it was interesting that they all did have that personality. Yeah, even the guys I knew, guy across the street, my friend's brother, was a Vietnam vet that didn't fight. He was a, a airplane mechanic, and even he was screwed Fuck. up. Yeah, my Jesus. uncle, my uncle was a Marine, and he never talks about it wow. ever. Like yeah. literally, never talks about it. one night. He and I got drunk and he opened up about it. Really? And wow. he was it was wild. He saw a fucking Chinook get hit and just spun. Uh. Dude, dudes flew everywhere. I mean, it was now my other uncle was in Vietnam and he is a little more I don't he's a little more sociopath, like psycho that's yeah. like mm. I killed a guy. Yeah. And I was like, How was that? And it was just me and him and he goes, it's incredible. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> yo. I told you, I knew a guy who was a sniper and he was saying, yeah. you, he's like, you get addicted to the feeling of killing people. And he was like, he was a nice dude. He's like, I didn't have any, I didn't have like ill will towards people. Yeah. But he's like, I, you, I like would watch people eat dinner and as soon as they finish, pff, right in the head. He's like, by like the 12th one, he's like, you get like a God complex and you're like, I'm ending this. God is done. damn. Yeah. So you just my watch uncle, people hang my, out. The guy in Vietnam. I th I've told you this before. It was it was like a ninety degree trail, and you couldn't see around the corner. So he's walking one way. A Viet Cong was walking up the path. He said they literally bumped into each other in the jungle, and then it was just a race to see who could get wow. their pistol, who could get their gun out faster, and he got his out. Woo! Jesus first. Christ! Now don't get. He's still. I mean, and then he got he got hit with a he got hit with a rocket propelled grenade. And he blew. He has his nipples missing. His calves what? off. Oh. Yeah, and he had to lay there. Cause they're in the middle of a firefight. He had to lay there for three hours on the jungle floor. Like I'm dead. I'm dying. For oh sure. yeah. I mean, he's yeah. He's a hero. Yeah. 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 But I mean, Fuck. and is it that different from war? like my father was in Korea and mm. Korean and uh, war. And he said the most disturbing part was, which is still chilling that the lieutenants or the officers would nightly bring in the Korean prisoners and, beat the living shit out of him and always like hey brooklyn you want a piece and he's like yeah. no thanks and it would just like beat the just torture the guys just beat uh, them for fun so it was already starting to lose the uh yeah you know, yeah yeah the glamour then, of world war ii and then but but vietnam is a different like i feel like they were this this setup even though it happened in world war ii it happens in every war the setup of search and destroy is what fucked them all up because here you are you grow up in the 50s you're watching these movies. You have a little bit, even if you're not innocent, you know, you know you're capable of, but you're still, and then suddenly you're in the middle of this thing where they go, no, you have to burn all these hamlets. Because like I said, the hamlet program, the Vietnamese took over the hamlets. So they go, and the Vietnamese are in there. And whether they are or not, they're in enough where you're like, okay, it's them or me. And so you're torturing all these peasants out of their house, torture, torturing their it's village. burning their That's like the, that's yeah. the strategy. How, how long do they do that for? That's our strategy. How long do they do that for? The whole time. The whole time. The whole from the whole burn torches down? Yeah. From 1963. Jesus Christ. And they said even, that's what Maury, Morley Safer was, uh, the fan, you know, the guy from 60 Minutes? We, I always thought, oh, that was an annoying guy, you know? But meanwhile, he was a reporter, and he had the, they filmed in 1965, Torching of a Hamlet. 1965, early in the war. And that's when everyone started protesting the Vietnam yeah. War. Because they watch on TV, they're like, wait, this is like liberating France. What's going on here? It was just all these peasants running. They're torching the house and shooting the pigs. Like that was on the yeah. national news, on Fuck the evening Christ. news. That's what you were watching? Well, I don't remember that, but I'm saying, but people, yeah, it yeah. shocked the whole country. That's when the protests began. Because we were the good guys. We were oh, always you. the good guys. But we were always the good guys. Well, we were showing it, like, check us out. And they were like, boo. Like, no, the news was like, hey. This is crazy. That's because the news was doing their job. True, yeah. And they're like, here's yes. what's actually <laughs> happening. No, right. They just shot. And Molly Safer had to leave. Like, they were threatening him because they were saying he took it out of context. He didn't, which he probably <laughs> he took did it out too. of context. Well, I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. they weren't saying that they had been getting shot, like Marines had gotten shot from that village yeah. oh yeah so yeah. i'm saying it wasn't like you know but i mean but no they still, were bad. it was a stupid strategy you know? see this is what happened yeah. it was crazy because the french had just done it before us yes mm -hmm. so they they did this thing called pacification where they were like right we're gonna they tried to do the social set like they were like we're gonna help build your rice patties up we're gonna give you food we're gonna build schools and during the day it worked mm -hmm. and then at night the Viet Cong would come in yeah. Take the food. That's take right. The guns. Hide guns in the villages. Hide weapons. Yes. Hide soldiers. 
So then during the day, they'd come back and they'd just keep getting supplies and they'd yeah. do raids from the villages mm-hmm. with the weapon the French gave them. Yeah. And then so the French would come back and be like, we know you're harboring communists. Oh, Jesus. And they would burn the fin village down. Yeah. And then we did that. We did the and exact did same it. thing. And then the, under the thing of like, we don't want communism to spread, which is funny to be like, we don't want com- You want to be free, guys. So you're, trust me. And you're like burning yeah. villages down. Like, trust me. This is well, it, And I think we did the government. same thing kind of in Afghanistan, right? Mm-hmm. In Iraq. Where it would be like, we're going to give you guys money. Work with us. And then the Taliban comes in at night mm-hmm. and is like, puts a gun to their head and is like, well, you work with us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the whole problem with everything, right? Yeah. If you go to. Some, you know, if the cops go to a neighborhood bar, the only analogy I ever use in everything is a neighborhood bar. And, um, but if they go to a neighborhood bar and go, listen, we want you, we, we want you guys to do a couple of troublemakers in here. And the troublemakers are in there. Or they're yeah, outside yeah, yeah. waiting for these guys to leave. Yeah. They're not there. They're only going to be there part. They know you're going, yeah. leave. you're not there to stay forever. So yeah. it always ends up screwing you, you know? Yeah. And if, if we don't kill them at night, they're going to come get beheaded. Well, by Isn't the, that what uh, happened in Vietnam? I yeah. mean, once they took over, exactly, they they came all all that stuff. They just destroyed. They yeah. genocide got rid of everybody that bugged them. Anything. Everybody with a pair of glasses. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's like they. How'd you get those? They <laughs> literally went. Well, just anybody who's so sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. fancy themselves intellectual. It was like they. It's like the army came in and literally just rampaged through Bushwick, Williamsburg, and Greenpoint. In the past three years, nice. And just said, I get everybody it. here, I who's, get it. everybody here has been to a show at a bookstore. Just line up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just burn the bookstores. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, that's the thing about. That's why I never really got into Vietnam. You know, I like the Civil War and World War Two, where it's like, yeah, it's kind of noble, right? It seems and then, like, yeah. and then Vietnam is the first one that's like. Well, it's so, but even Korea was like a harbinger. It's all like Korea, so psychological. Yeah. And my another uncle who fought in World War II and fought with Audie Murphy. Do you know who Audie Murphy was? No, who's that? He's a famous, he's the most famous World War II hero. Okay. Like he, they made him a movie star. He wasn't a good actor, but he was this legendary World War II. My uncle happened to be in his unit. Oh, wow. And he said that all the hype, to show you the difference in the war, all the hype about him was was true. He goes, this guy was the bravest. He goes, he was so crazy. He'd run right into battle. Yeah. They were at Anzio. They were at Battle of the Ball. All these places. He goes, he would just run right into battle. <laughs> He's nuts. <laughs> and, and, and in those days, they'd celebrate now. Like, man, nah, that's a hero. Even, even uh, you know, any movie about Iraq, there's still an undertone of darkness. All the World War II movies, they're like, hey, there's no problem here. Yeah. yeah. Kick their ass. Yeah, yeah like this guy's funny. great. You know, it had like a positive <laughs> like John, tone to John it. John Basalone. You know, What's that? that? He was a uh, he was in the Pacific. There's a rest stop in New Jersey, like one of the first rest stops. That's what he got out of it. Oh. He got the Medal of Honor. He was he. That's awesome. It's in the Pacific, and the sh- like. He goes wild, picks up his gun without the fucking heat pad, just mows down the. J- and then he goes home. So they put him on a USO tour yeah. to send bonds. Yeah. And he's like, No, I need to go back and fight. Yeah. So then he goes to Iwo Jima and is like, I'm gonna do that gun thing again. What? And he died. Oh no! Yeah, he Bust died. Out the trick. But he got yeah. Yeah, boy, like he was a side trace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom's got three up. tours of Vietnam. He he really? did one, and he's like, send me back, and did another. Whoa. And he's like, give me one more. Who did it? My mom's cousin. Wow, he did three he fought, tours. He did two more. He fought, three. Wow. He was because he was like, I'm not going back. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna and what did he end up doing? After the war, uh, I saw him like spazzing, fighting an arcade owner on the boardwalk one time. <laughs> <laughs> that was Charlie. Good man. He's good that was man. Charlie, dude. Dude, he was. But that's the whole point. Yeah, he was with my mom the one time when they were younger, and he was sleeping in the car, and some guy like screamed something at my mom, and he like popped up and was just got out and beat the shit. Out. They were in traffic on the highway. Yeah, he beat the guy and throw him on the side of the road. And he's like, "Come on, let's go." Imagine that guy. He's, he sees a woman in a car. He's like, "Fuck, <laughs> guy, sits the guy up. pops up." <laughs> yeah, dude, just pops that's up. A Vietnam, fresh Vietnam from that. three tours. Yeah, I think it was like seventy four. Just pops up. Like what? Can you imagine three tours? I mean, that's a real, that's a, I mean, two tours is crazy, but at least you feel like during the second tour, the guy's like, what did I say yes to this? Yeah. But if you go for three, that means you're like, in all the way. Yeah. That's when I told the guy, the dude I was talking to, it was actually is my ex-father-in-law. I was talking to him, about, I was telling him about my mom's cousin. He's like, oh, that guy just likes killing people. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, eh, maybe. I mean, he probably just, uh, there's also the guy. Everyone's got the thing. You go there. True. <laughs> You go there and then you go home and you're like, I can't be home Mm-mm. after yeah. you're just in the f- jungle. Yeah. Killing yes. People. Now you got to go pretend to be a human. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. you get off the road for a long time. Yeah. Say it happens to cops. <laughs> it happens <laughs> to cops. To a lesser degree. With a 
What's that? Yeah. It happens to cops too. Yes. They, get, they get addicted to that adrenalized state and they go home. They're like, this sucks. Sure. And they stay there forever. And, uh, but the other thing with Vietnam, which I've watched a lot of those, uh, YouTube guys where they interview and you see the similarities in them eventually. And one of them is that they said they got screwed. First of all, just imagine this. Supposed to be the country sending all this money for aid. They, one guy was, several of them said the sea rations were terrible. He goes, mm. we looked at the date on some of them. They were Korean and World War II. Yikes. That's how old the sea rations yeah. were. Jesus. That they're giving the troops at supposedly the richest time in our history. And the other one is the M14. They said the M16 got more guys killed when they switched to the M16 because Westmoreland wanted, or well, one of these guys just, it was like a vanity project. The M14 wouldn't jam in the mud. The oh, M16 yeah. jammed. And they said guys would just be getting killed, bayoneted to death oh, because it would Christ. jam and you couldn't unjam it. Oh. The, the, the M14 was, the early gun was better. That sucks. Yeah. America really fucked up. I don't like it. But yeah. The whole thing just the whole thing was bums just, me out. Yeah. And then each president had an opportunity to end it. Yeah, that's right. And they all just keep dragging it out. But that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying about that yeah. state. Kennedy. Yeah, he was close to ending it. He was, he was, yeah, but yeah. he wasn't. Well, he, they, you know I mean? they made like, sure he didn't. And they said, and this guy Van was talking to Henry Cobbett Lodge, who was the ambassador. Clo all the guys who were close to Kennedy. And it was just one of those things where it's like, just at the last minute, it's like any other decision you've seen in any power person where you're like, everybody has this logical argument and then they go, ah, no, I think this is better. Yeah. And you're like, what? Why? You don't even give us a reason. And he didn't give us a reason. It was uh, was there any kind of economic advantage that like was clear? I don't think so. Really? They didn't I don't even think like there was make any, any Yeah, there was know. nothing really there. I mean there was babes, rubber. Babes. No, there was rubber. All the shit that was there was gone when we left. True, true. Yeah. Rubber, coconuts, all the rice, it was all gone. I mean, we killed it. Damn, that sucks. I mean, Agent Orange. I mean, when you think about it, yeah, I about a, that. Agent Orange killing all the people that, they said their their levels of whatever diox dioxin yeah. were three times anybody else by the time we left and all the troops i mean doing his own troops is just crazy i mean that's the height of like uh immorality you know to just yeah the guys that are there fighting and you're just yeah. like yeah well you know it's like no no they're the ones you have to really try to be a little more careful with the opposite of what you're doing it was really a weird situation you know also the french were using napalm too they were before us. Yeah, they were. They were. We did everything they did. Sounds like a French the word. Exact Napalm. same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what that is? Yeah, that just is it, was gel. It? Yeah, it's like petroleum gel, yeah. and they light it on fire, and you yeah. spread it if you like touch it. You, you, you water don't have to it. light it on fire; it just goes in your body. It burns. Eesh. And water makes it worse, right? Because if you take yes, grease fire, but water right. on it gets worse. Yeah, it stinks. And it, I mean, but France really wanted Vietnam, so well, they, they had it. it before that. Yeah, they wanted it back. Must I mean? They had it. They lost it. They're like, I think we can get this back. They want their baby back. So but spread what some is, fire on people. Yeah. What is <laughs> it about Vietnam? That's so because we apparently wanted it too. We went in there in the mid fifties and we couldn't leave. You ever go to a party and you're like, I gotta leave. This party's over. Oh yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like you know, yeah, you gotta I guess get I will up. do some coke. <laughs> yeah. You're saying it was too late. It was too late. You end up going. If only I had left <laughs> at eleven o'clock like I planned to. That's Vietnam. This probably is just a psychological thing. It's like you want to be the best general. You start losing. You're like, we got yeah. this. We got this. And it's like, no, no, no. We should have this. Just hear me out. This is my passion project. Yeah. This is my well, baby. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. Everybody was just about. You know, the military, like their job is to get more money for the military. Mm -hmm. How can you get more money if you're not in a war? So how do they, what, what, what do you like? How does this thing progress? What do you, yeah. how does it end? What, what's going on? Vietnam? Yeah. I mean, it, look, it ended when we left. It was the most, it was really, they're lucky. It was the mid seventies. It was like 75, that famous rooftop yeah, Saigon, thing. Saigon, yeah. They're lucky because by then everybody was, just, it was like the age of apathy when I was a teenager. People were just into drugs, you know, dancing. And, you know, it was just a very uh, hedonistic time. People were done. All the protesting that happened in the 60s, people were done by the 70s. You know what I mean? And they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so when people left, it wasn't even, there wasn't even outrage. It was like, oh, that was, that was awkward. That you was know? a bomber. <laughs> that <laughs> was just, yeah. People were just like, whoa. Yeah, just, Coke just and disco, so yeah. And, and you feel so bad for all the it. people that, uh, you know, yeah, all the Vietnamese that, was still helping us by the end were fucked. Yeah. Like that that they famous, got killed. That helicopter on the roof. The helicopter on the that roof. That picture. That's a long line. Yeah. And that's the last chopper. 
That's right. Those Lash. boys are staying, and that's that's, that's right. a negative time. Yeah. Oh yeah. When that they, chopper takes off, and you're like next in line. I I've had, got that, I've had a five similar minutes experience. earlier. I was at Longwood Gardens waiting for a shuttle to like go see the shuttles. Like I was like <laughs> the last guy. guy. <laughs> I had to wait like 15 more minutes. I was like, yeah. I don't know what happened. It settled down. It's better now. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's not tearing. The damage is done. I mean, that's so, the thing. You, the power <laughs> shift immediately. Yeah. And all the people, like when you think about the people right now. In your life, that you were like, ah, fuck you. And then if suddenly they're in power, they go, where is this son of a bitch? Doria, where does he live again? Yeah. And then, you know, you just hope they, you know, well, accidentally mistake you for Mike Feeney and kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what's it like? So you had, you grew up watching Vietnam. And yeah. then what was it like for you to see like the Iraq war and all? Because the older I get, the more no, I'm like, I already I saw believed, this before. I believed that we, that there were weapons of mass destruction. They got you too. They got me. I believed it all the way. I said, there's got to be weapons of mass destruction. It wouldn't be this, you know, they wouldn't be going to this extreme after Vietnam. Yeah, they wouldn't be if the, it wasn't our leaders. Oh. They're not going to be fooled twice. Wouldn't be this diabolical. I said, they can't be that stupid, you know, or diabolical. Either way, I said, there's no way there's not weapons of mass destruction. It wasn't. I mean, I was a kid. Me, me and the Senate believed this. Yeah, you and <laughs> Hillary Clinton. All of us, yeah. <laughs> I was, Only a few didn't. I was a kid, and it was 2003. Yeah. So I was fresh off 9-11. I yeah, was yeah. Fuck, I was an eighth grade patriot. I had a bone dude. to pay. Yeah. Oh, I was pretty yeah. much a troop. Yeah, they had you. They had you. Four years later, I'd be going to West Point. Yeah, they had you. I was ready. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, being out my seat up. Iraq, I was pumped. I was yeah. watching the You remember when the, you I watched the news. I like the fact that he you get into West Point. You know, there's a hard school to get into. I got it. He was in. You did? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm I very went. impressed. You did? Yeah. Well, I quit right away, but I went. Oh, that's, a, that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to get on your finance to get into a place I like played that? football. That helped. Oh. Yeah. They got me in for that. Yeah. I got like an 11 something on my SATs. Yeah, Nothing. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a little better than me, but it's not that good. Little above average. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Got, that's potential 11. I got 1030. Yeah. I was 1100. For football, that's a fucking 1600. Yeah. Speaking of the epidemic of fatness, Lemaire suffered a fat attack, dude, in public. Oh, <laughs> you bring up Lemaire's fat attack? Yeah. Lemaire. Lemaire said it wasn't a fat attack. It is one hundred percent a fat attack. I'll, dude. I'll hear. I'll give you the version. That, I, before we go any yeah. further, I will say this: high school football. Yeah. Every single year, a kid suffered from a fat attack, <laughs> and it's the funniest <laughs> thing in the world. No, you remember this when kids, the pussy kids on the team would be like, I'm having heat stroke. And they'd have to sit in the gator. They'd have to sit in the gator <laughs> under the shade. <laughs> fat attacks on the football field. Fat attacks are real. And then occasionally dudes would die from fat attacks. Like every year across the country, a bunch of dudes die from fat attacks in practice. But every year, kids, I dude, one of them listens to this. One of my friends had a fat attack, and I know he listens to this. <laughs> They had to like they like taped ice across his chest, and he had to sit in the gator with his shirt off. <laughs> yeah, you need if you, they're like uh, epipens or nugs, like dude. What up, nugs? Instead of the defibrillator, you need like a fan for a fat yeah. attack. You're just like, oh, hold on, let me. Fat let attacks us, are brutal. Blow some air, turn it up. No, we need high. Turn it up to high, doctor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the mayor, you got sent to the gator, dude. They had to, <laughs> they had to put you under a tree. This was a story I heard. It yeah. was that the, the place was packed, mm. right? So already it's packed summertime. The, the threat levels for a fat attack are high. <laughs> so they said, Lemaire pulls up. They should have that on the news. A like a weather channel would be like, fat today's fat attack uh, probably is red. We're in the red today. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to powder your balls, fats. Powder your balls and keep a towel handy to dab your head. If you're black, you can carry a towel, which is nice. <laughs> I, wondered, I saw a guy dabbing his head today. If you're white, you must wear shorts and Crocs. <laughs> yeah, so Lemaire, the story was you rolled up. It, it was sweltering. It was crowded. And then um, showed up uninvited. A good friend of the Correct body. me if I'm wrong. Uninvited. To well, no, a full he was capacity. warned. He was warned. Our friends were like, well, Mayor, it's really crowded here and it's really hot. You can come, but it's going to be kind of miserable. So your fr his friends were like, there's a good chance you're going to have a fat attack. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but it's hot up here. It's not built for the thicks. Yeah. The so fats. You dude. were discovered on the steps of this place. Am I you're correct? <laughs> sitting, sitting, not laying. <laughs> Didn't make it to the roof. <laughs> no, you know, I think he made it. He went back in. You can make like a video game out of it, like an Oregon Trail. <laughs> just Lemaire trying to get to a rooftop. It, dude, it was, it, was, it was hot. You have to yeah. stop and hunt for chips. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you have to dump, dude. <laughs> well, dude, it gets even better. So the story I heard that, that you, I guess you went out there, like, oh, it's too crowded, hit the steps, and then you were discovered uh, by a friend of the podcast sitting there. And friend she, of the podcast found you. She was like collapsed concerned, in the hallway. Concerned and was like, "Dude, are you okay?" And you were like, "I, I don't feel well." So then you went and laid. they got to treat it. They got to throw buckets Dude. of water on them. They got to treat him like a whale being transported <laughs> to a different tank. They got to throw water Dude, on him. The mayor was then transported to the owner's bed, the owner, and laid in the owner's bed. What? Fans on, fans on. With, did you have a cold towel? I believe there's a cold compress applied. No. Ice, maybe? You don't know? You blacked ice. out? There was <laughs> ice. There was, you fatted out. There was ice. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, I fatted out. I don't recall. There was ice. I think the, the person applied ice. And he laid it. <laughs> to his brow? To was his brow. Like, uh, oh, true. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, Lemaire, quick question. I mean, look at, look at off the look at, you, look at your pride right now. I see your pride. I don't have any pride. Admit your attack. <laughs> yeah, I, t- I, t- I was being a cool guy. And you were being Mr. Cool? I was being Mr. Cool. How cool? I was at the punchline before oh, that's being Mr. Cool, cool with yeah. uh, Andy and Nate, and I had like three or four scotch and sodas. And <laughs> <laughs> you can't drink. Do you drink? I drink a little bit. I feel like I've never drank with you. No, we have to. Now he drinks well, a mogul. True. <laughs> now these bullying white executives. So you had a couple of scotch and service. I had a couple of scotch and service. Then I go to the roast battle, very nervous, get upstairs. What are you nervous about? Because I, I didn't think I'd get in. And then uh, you get. Oh, because it was full capacity <laughs> and they said, don't come. Yeah, more welcome. We can't let you yeah, in. Yeah, but what else am I going to do? Just wait. That's a Mr. Cool move. I know what you did. You big timed everybody there. You I said, didn't big time you know, me. More scotch and sodas. You barred I'm Matt in. and Shane's producer. You, you barred nah, I didn't say nothing. I didn't say anything. So you ran to your car it's and like grabbed a, a knife. I True. <laughs> Following Andy and Nate in. And Matt's wife was there to stop you. <laughs> Andy was Damn. on a roast battle, so I followed them in. Got you. Andy was on it, so I came with him. And then uh, they had this this uh, drink in the back that was like uh, wine and I don't know. It was I drank jungle a bunch. Juice? I drank a bunch. Sangria? Think it was jungle bro? juice. I think it was jungle mm. juice. I drank a bunch. Sangria brings me back to Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to Madrid, dude. I'm getting some sangria. A little fall. You get to walk through the streets and the marketplaces. They just ladle you some fucking you gotta go, dude. sangria. You got to go back. I said, damn it, eh? <laughs> damn it, eh? <laughs> she went back like a full like old school country, like a little I'm going full Paris. Ma- I'm going back MAGA, dude. I'm going full MAGA. You probably get respect over there. The, fas- the fascistas? The fascistas, dude. The fascistas will be like, fuck yeah, dude. Dude, dude get this guy in here. <laughs> So Lemaire, so you, you you go in there, you shoulder to the punch bowl, <laughs> yeah. you, you came elbow in your way to the punch shit-faced. bowl. Shit faced. I came in drunk to, and I started power drinking, and then I uh, the show was over, and I was like, I got to go on the stairs. I'm sweating, and I threw up, and I went to sit down, and then Kyle, you threw uh, up. A Ew, you show, threw up punch. I threw up. It was no, it was like a lot. <laughs> it was like yeah, but you threw up the oh, there was food in there. Yeah, there was food in there. Too. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> what were you grubbing on beforehand? I don't know. Yeah, you do. What were you grubbing on? You it was know. probably Chipotle. Oh, Chipotle, and- Chipotle scotch and jungle juice in a fucking hot stairwell. That was just that's like a pressure cooker, dude. That's like a yeah, dude. They put that. That's like what those that's kids. A bomb. That's yeah. That's Boston Marathon. They just <laughs> they just put Chipotle and scotch in a La Mer, <laughs> set him on the sidewalk, and he exploded. <laughs> so, so you hit the steps. You puke. After I puke, I hit the steps. I was on the steps because I was waiting for the bathroom to open up and waiting for nobody to be there so I can go puke. But then I was discovered. Uh, good friend, Kyla Fox, discovers friend. you. Yeah, a lady found him. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, are you suffering from a fat attack <laughs> on the steps? <laughs> no, it was Chipotle. <laughs> That's a fat attack, dude. Yeah, dude. Don't try to blame fucking pre-existing conditions on this. That's de- yeah, that's true. That's like a like a COVID test. Yeah, you have a COVID pneumonia test. and you have a little bit of COVID. <laughs> so, so you're discovered on the steps. So you did take refuge. You say you St. Francis of Assisi in someone yes. else's bed. Yeah. Till your feet. You, you really- rested up. They laid you to rest in someone's bed. <laughs> he was in a fevered state. In his fevered state. Oh, dude, it, just putting a fucking like sweaty dude you didn't invite to a party in your bed. <laughs> I fucking hate you for this. <laughs> Sneakers on? I didn't lay in the bed. I laid on the side. Like, I, uh, I mean, I can't believe bed. you assumed he was wearing sneakers, but go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Yeah, they were. Like, side of the bed, though. I didn't like put my feet on the bed. Were you wearing your tennis shoes? <laughs> <laughs> your finest tennis shoes? 
You didn't put your feet on the bed. No, you remember that. You don't remember anything else. No, I remember Kyla. You remember the thing me. where you were polite. That's what you remember? I remember Kyla <laughs> guiding me to the bed, <laughs> and then she left. Did you think you were getting some? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, damn, girl, you got to take <laughs> You move quick. <laughs> she found you in the stairwell. I was like, come on. Get to the bedroom now. Quick. You have 24 hours. <laughs> So how did you recover? What happened? I laid down for like 10 minutes, and I went upstairs on the couch, talked about basketball, and then I drove home. <laughs> Fat attack. If you, you drove recovered home. in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah. Now, when I grew up, when I was a kid, I lived in Mexico. And uh, from when I was, I know, I know, I know, like I'm aware that's like not Pennsylvania cool. crushes Mexico. Yes. You guys are dying to get to PA, dude. Yes. And I got obsessed with the idea of the president of the United States. It's where it became a thing to me. And the president at the time was Nixon. I cut a picture out of him, uh, of him out of the paper. And I put it, taped it up next to Nixon? my bed. Yes, I loved Richard Damn, Nixon. When loved I was a Nixon. little kid, I was so about Richard Nixon. And I wrote a letter to my abuelita, my grandmother. Yeah. And I sent her a picture of Nixon and said, this is the president of the United States. He's the greatest, He's man, the fucking greatest man. man in the country. He's so cool. He's the best man. I didn't know a single thing about <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. And he had this serious face. And I had a dream. It's the first dream I remember. I the My bedroom was in the front of our house. So you looked out at the front of our house. And it, I was uh, asleep. And it was m like a Sunday morning. And I heard a band, like a marching band. And I looked outside. And it was Nixon. <laughs> Like walking up my street, just no, no spectators. Yeah. Just him walking up my, with, followed by a marching man. Boom, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. And I came out on the front yard. I, we had this walkway and he got down on one knee and he said, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran into his arms. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Damn, you love Nick. <laughs> I loved him so much. <laughs> Damn, Isn't that dude. crazy? <laughs> I've never told anybody that. How you know that? I've you? never told anybody that in my life. And so, Louis, Louis, like Senor. Oh, and it's funny. There's the only president, senor. the idea of his joy because Nixon was such a miserable man yeah. that his joyful side was very rare. There's only one time I've ever seen it on film. And it's when he's playing piano. He's in a tuxedo. And I think he's at his daughter's wedding. And he was a concert pianist. He was very good. And he's playing piano and he plays some big crescendo. And he's got this big dumb <laughs> grin on his face. And I think maybe I had seen that because that's the only that grin, every time I see it, I'm in that dream. So, but my parents saw that I had these pictures of him next to my bed. And they were like, he's not. A good he's not that great. <laughs> he's not because Wargate was happening. Yeah. And every night my parents were sitting in front of the TV, this little fucking color TV, watching Watergate, watching the hearings. And it was like shh. And, and you're like, how's serious. it going? Yeah, I'm like, like how's my, how's my, how's my how's boy he, going? How's he doing? Yeah. <laughs> and Nixon's resignation was just like a depressing, uh, destroying, sad, fucked up thing. It was just like, what now? Thank <laughs> you.